When houses burn or buildings collapse and people are trapped inside, one question has to be answered. Who's going in first? You want to do the, go in and look for victims. You want to go and, and essentially have ears and eyes on the scene. Now, unlikely new rescuers are getting ready to answer the call. Tiny flying machines called Pico Quadrotors. Yash Mogunkar is their proud father. They do seem to have a lot of character. Each of the robots behaves differently. Uh, and I do have my personal favorites. Those are the, the ones that fly the best. Today, none of them are flying the best. Oh, 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 oh. They have a lot of work to do to prove they're the perfect rescue tools. The robots themselves are completely blind, but they rely on the motion capture system to give them their position. Red lights spread around the room flicker 100 times a second. Motion capture cameras see how that light bounces off each of the robots and feeds that information back to the main computer. It is the brain for all the Pico quads. It figures out where they are and tells them where to go. Why would that happen? Like every family, they're having communication issues. Basically, the cameras don't know which robot they're looking at and how to control it. This project is, is very new. We've crashed them so many times, but we've never lost a single robot. Because at this scale, the strength to weight the ratio of the materials that we're using is, is uh, works in our favor. That smaller size also makes them more agile. So if I take a vehicle and I reduce it to half its scale, then essentially the mass drops to one eighth and the ability to accelerate increases. That agility means on days when they do get along, they can move as one. Today, they're finally starting to come around. First up for these adorable rescuers, Yash is sending one to do a bit of exploring. I'm gonna give it a shot. It might not work at all. We're trying to prove that these smaller robots can fit into tighter spaces and give us a video coverage of uh, areas that larger robots would not necessarily be able to reach. So this version of the Pika Quad has been uh, specifically modified for onboard video. In flight, it sends me uh, a real-time video feedback. Pico Quads may be cute, but they're not powerful. So the camera and transmitter are shrunk down to weigh less than four pennies. Hmm, not bad. After some coaxing, his brothers get up and join him ready to show off their skills. It pretty much feels like a music conductor, that you have a big symphony in front of you and you're trying to conduct music. We've already proven that they fly, but now it's, it's, uh, we're trying to prove how well they can follow a certain given command without any prior knowledge of what to do next. We uh, basically specify a formation that three followers need, need to uh, maintain at all times, and the, the task is to follow the leader uh, in the sense that wherever the leader moves, the formation must um, maintain a certain distance away. If the leader rotates uh, or turns left and right, the formation would rotate around the leader. The final test of the day, surviving collisions. For the next test, uh, I've modified one of these robots with this uh, custom custom made cage. And the, the, the basic idea is uh, we, can, we can have this robot collide into certain obstacles those gentle bumps don't seem to hurt at all, but in the case of harder smackdowns, it's designed to crash to the floor. The shape of the cage is supposed to turn it right side up so it can fly again, but that's not working, and it needs some help from Yash. This is frustrating. Maybe one last try. So it self right itself, and I can still take off. Here it goes. It went pretty well, so like, uh, like we predicted, it did fall to the ground, but it was able to self flight itself because of the design of the cage, and we were able to resume perfect stable flight afterwards. These Pico quads made their dear old dad proud today. They explored, worked as a team, and even handled some hard knocks. They've proven they have some of the skills to be the first responders in a disaster zone, and that might happen sooner than you think. I think the technology is here, and it's a question of a couple of years before you'll actually see this be realized in the real world.